Flip to Freedom, episode number 73. Hello again, this is Sean Terry from the Flip to Freedom podcast, and we are on episode number 73. And uh, if you're listening for the very first time, um, I'd like to welcome you and let you know that the sound quality on the other shows is better. Um, I'm actually driving in my car right now. It's the day before Thanksgiving, and um, I've been running around this morning and uh, checking out these properties um, and getting them ready to go uh, for the weekend to get these suckers sold. So, um, what do I do? I flip houses. I wholesale houses. Um, and wholesaling houses is as simple as getting a property tied up under contract, getting a below market property tied up under contract, and then turn around and selling the property to a cash buyer before you have to close. So, example, if you have a $100,000 property, you get it under contract for, say, $50,000. Um, then you turn and you have 30 days to close. You literally sign a contract. You turn around and market it to a cash buyer. Cash buyer comes along. Uh, you sign a contract with a cash buyer for $60,000. And uh, you take both those contracts to a closing agent and you instruct them to do either A, an assignment, or, uh, or double escrow. And then uh, the cash buyer brings in 100% of the funds. He brings in 60 grand plus closing costs. He wires in the funds to closing. Um, they will, uh, the title company will give you or send you $10,000 or give you a check for $10,000 and then the seller will get the $50,000. This is all done uh, typically within the same day um, and it's all done within the 30 day time frame. That is wholesaling houses. And so the trick becomes um, finding the deals, right? Finding the buyers, finding the deals, and getting a system in place to go out and do that. Now, um, in this particular episode, we're going to talk about the four phases to freedom. We did that in, I think, episode number 68, I think it was, or 69, one of those, uh, where we talked about episode um, uh, phase one. And phase one is where you go out and get your first check. Go out and, and, and put forth the effort and the marketing effort to find your first deal. Um, and finding a first deal is really not that difficult. You can find properties off the HUD Home Store website. You can find properties off marketing, uh, sending yellow letters to absentee investors or send yellow letters to inherited properties. You can get these lists very easily. Um, or you can um, put bandit signs out, internet marketing through Google AdWords and pay-per-click advertising. There's lots of different ways to get these deals. So um, the goal is to is to market and find these particular properties below market and then turn around and tie them up on a contract and then turn around and sell them. So the four phases of freedom, the first phase is to get your check. The second phase is once you get your first check, you understand, it gives you confidence, you understand the process, you go through the entire process and you get it. Okay. Now, the whole thing is to go out and um, after that is to go out and quit your job. That's phase two. Is to go out and replace your income. So, for an example, if you make $100,000 a year, the goal is to get $100,000 of cash in the bank as fast as humanly possible uh, by flipping properties in your spare time, Okay, around your job. That's what you want to do. You want to get one year's worth of income. Um, now, there's a way to do that, and that's what we're going to talk about in this particular episode. And um, also, too, we're also going to talk about what if you're stuck in a rut? What if you're in a rut in life? What if you're in a rut in, um, in your business? Uh, what if you're just in a rut in general? How to get out of the rut? We're going to talk about what you can do today that can get you out of the rut. Because guess what? 2012 is just around the corner. We're in, we're in no, you know, end of November now. we got December, which is this year has flown by. And uh, we've got to want, we want to make our 2012 phenomenal. So um, the goal is to quit your job in 2012. So the only way we're going to do that is be able to get you out of the rut, um, get momentum going in your way, uh, and then you can turn around and have the ability to turn around and quit your job. Now, I have had, um, I'm driving here, um, just came from a property, and uh, I want, but I'm going to try to <laughs> recognize a couple people who actually went into iTunes and submitted reviews. So I'm going to uh, try to read this while driving 
80 miles an hour. So, hold on a sec. Uh, let's see if I can uh, do this while I'm driving. Let's see if it comes up. Uh, okay. Here's a review from uh, uh, F Fret Tugger. Fret Fret Tugger, and, I, and my eyes are whacked, but I, uh, I'm trying to read this here. November 22nd says, Sean is the most sincere fellow who loves God, his family, and, and ranking in massive real estate profits. He teaches you everything he knows for free. This podcast should be on should be on your must listen list. Five star rating with the headline that says "Golden Nuggets from Heaven." Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, submitting that. Uh, the next one is from uh, 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 Fabius seven six seven one eight. Sorry if I mispronounce that. Uh, five star rating says five stars rating, which is all the way. Sean is in has inspiring oh jeez Sean has inspired me to start a real estate investing career his information in real estate strategy and his motivations motivational speaking are truthful and come from his heart I can't wait to do my first deal so I can share uh, my joy and happiness of this of my first deal and then quit my job following his system. Next one is from Rick, 2008. Um, five stars says, great podcast. One word, great. And uh, thank you for uh, submitting that. Um, um, I think that is it. Next one is from Gave K79 on uh, November 13th. How can this, five stars, how can this be free? At first, I was uh, waiting for the pitch, but there was none. Uh, this was by far the best information in real estate investing I've ever listened to. I have paid $12,000 for coaching program. Yes, $12,000. Don't even get me started. That did not even come close to putting it together like Sean does. This podcast has everything you need to get started investing and becoming um, free from the rat race. Listen to every podcast then starting it in. I have listened to every podcast and starting in. All of the nuts and bolts and the mindset here. I cannot work. Um, I cannot thank you enough, Sean. Keep up the great work. Okay. I've uh, enough <laughs> with, uh, with that. All right. So now, um, if you want to get more from me, I actually wrote a book, um, and the book is a um, 129-page book on how to quit your job in 19 weeks or less. It's basically a system on uh, a week-by-week -week system on each week on what you have to do to go out and quit your job in 19 weeks or less. Okay, and you can get that for free by going to flip the number two freedom.com. Flip to freedom. Dot com. You can download that for free. Just enter your email address. You'll see a video of me, and um, and you can download that. Um, I've had people tell me that they've spent well over a thousand dollars for the same information that uh, I got for free. So that they uh, get for free. So all right, let's get into uh, the four phases of freedom. We're on phase number two, which is um, how to go out and replace your income. Okay, now. Basically, what we've done so far is we've got our first check. Now, think about this. We've got our first check. Think how it. We, we, we went through the process. We, we marketed for a property. We talked to a seller. We got a deal tied up. We turned around. We sold it. We went through with that. All that unknown is gone. All that unknown of, I don't know if I can do it. What if I can't find a buyer? What if I don't know how to do the paperwork? What if I, you know, what, what, what if I can't sell it? What if, you know, all this stuff. Right, we all we, we have all these doubts and fears. Everybody does. Um, that's just part of the deal. That's just like anything new. You know what I mean? It's like if you're, you know, your 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 first job when you, or when you get a job or, or a new job. You know, it's uh, there's always always have this unknown in fear of what what we don't know. It's in it's crazy. My daughter is is you know cra you know she hates new things, and I, I keep telling her. I said, listen, new things are great. Get your blood flowing. Get you excited about you know stuff. You know, yeah, it's unknown, but guess what? Have a little faith, push forward, and uh, and you will have success. So, so now at this point, that fear is gone. You've completed your first deal. You've picked up your first check. Now, when you pick up your first check, man, you're excited. 
your belief is there. You understand you've done it. All the naysayers, all the friends, the family, the relatives, all the people have said, no way, this can't work, you can't do it. Guess what? Now you get a check to shove in their face. Now you have proof that you went out and have done it. So now you're feeling good. Now the secret is to go out and ramp it up. Okay, ramp it up around your job because see you don't want to quit your job um, until you have one year's worth of income. Now, if you let's say you make yeah you got to make fifty thousand dollars a year, right? Or let's say you make fifty thousand dollars a year and you have to um, go out and put fifty thousand dollars worth of cash in the bank. Okay, and let's say each deal is you make five thousand dollars say average on each deal. Well, guess what? You need ten deals. Well. After you've done 10 deals, guess what? You're going to have confidence that you can go out and you can market for properties. You're going to have your system in place. You're going to have your 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 connections, your buyers. You're going to you're going to understand the process. You've rinsed and repeated 10 times. You've got 10 checks. And guess what? You're going to have confidence now to go out and have the ability to make a a, a, a logical decision. Uh, to quit your job because you're going to have the cash in the bank to do it, right? You know, and you're going to have the experience behind you. That's the two things that are incredibly important. So, I do not suggest anyone quit their job until they at least get one year worth of cash in the bank from flipping properties. Now, if you have just cash in the bank just because of whatever, and you have one year's worth of income in the bank, and and I still would not suggest quitting your job because you have not had the experience to go out and, and repeatedly go out and get these deals. Now, I remember when I first got started, I got my first deal, I worked really hard and I pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. I got my first deal, I knocked on pre-foreclosure doors, which I don't suggest, uh, but I went out and did it. I got my first deal and I remember, I was like, boom, I'm done. I did my first deal. I'm quitting, quit my job. I, I want out of it. I was so anxious just to get out of my job that that you know when I got that first check, I was like, man, I, you, you just think you can do it over and over and over and over again, and uh, and so you just and you just want to get out, so you quit. Well, <laughs> that was a mistake. Um, you know, it, it was a mistake because it puts you in a situation where you have to make a deal. And I'm telling you right now, you do not want to be in a situation where you have to make a deal because just like a dog can smell fear, a motivated seller can smell desperation. Okay? So think about it. You're going to be walking in. You're going to be talking to motivated sellers. You're going to be doing whatever you're going to be doing. And uh, and you're going to have to make a deal. So you're talking to a motivated seller and they're going to sense and they're going to smell that you are desperate to make that deal. Now, when I go into a deal, if I get it, great. If I don't, oh, well. That's just the way it is. You know, and they can sense that I don't need this deal. I don't need the headache. I don't need the deal. I, I don't need this deal. And I'm not going to force it and push the envelope and try to fit a square peg into a round hole. I'm not going to do it. You know, right? So it's amazing because when you have that attitude going in, deals just start coming to you. Sellers just start climbing back. I just got an email uh, yesterday from a seller we're working on. You know, went over there. You know, here, here's what we can do. This is it. And, uh, and then just left it at that. You know, had my assistant follow up. Um, and uh, follow up and just see you know, what was going on. Just say we got a couple other properties we're looking at. You know, we got to make a decision here. Where yeah, and they came back and they said, okay, let's just let's just get it done. You know, so that's a deal. And another deal, you know, it's 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 amazing. It happens like this. Yeah, it's it's like all the time. It's crazy. Um. So so anyways, that's the that's the uh, you know th that's the attitude you have to have going in and talking to these. So now. So now let's say today's the day you picked up your first check. What do you do now? What do you do to consistently build upon this? Well, if you listen to my previous episodes, you know that I am an advocate on tithing. Tithing is where you give 10% to some sort of either charitable organization, um, someone that gives you spiritual food, I guess you could say. It could be your church or a pastor or whatever. Um, but find some place to give, give. And uh, giving, right, and tithing is a spiritual law of success. Okay, it's a spiritual law of success. Um, so yeah, you can, you can find the properties and you can find the buyers and you can do that. And some investors do great. 
uh, and then some investors just fall on their face. Well, I, I can tell you in my life, and you can listen to back to the previous episodes, uh, when I don't tithe, things suck. When I do tithe, things great, because it is a spiritual law, and that law I don't mess with. Okay, So I recommend that you take 10% um, of that, say, $5,000, theoretically, and you take that and you give that to some sort of charity, some something, um, church, whatever. Then what you do is then you take 15% of the balance and then you reinvest that back into marketing. And you reinvest it into pay-per-click advertising. You reinvest it into uh, buying an inheritance list and sending out uh, yellow letters or postcards. You reinvest that in, back into marketing. Now, what's going to happen is when you reinvest that back into marketing, that number is you're going to go out and you're going to have marketing now and you're going to have calls coming in and you're going to have people. You're going to get another deal or two maybe. Okay? And what happens is that number that you reinvest in marketing is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger every single month to where, guess what? You're going to be in a position where you can get two and three and four and five deals every single month. Okay, And that's where you want to be in a position to create enough momentum uh, that you can uh, have the ability and confidence to quit your job. Now, so that's what you do. You take that and you turn around and you reinvest it back in the marketing. Now, what would I do if I was going to reinvest back in the marketing, what would I do? Okay, I got my first check. I'm confident. Number first thing I do is I um, is I definitely bid on HUD homes. Why? Because that's free. It doesn't cost a dime. Um, once you understand how to bid on HUD homes, you get the you get you get how that works for your area. Um, then that will increase your deal flow by a hundred percent. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I need properties. I go on there. I bid on HUD homes. I get them under contract, and I turn around and flip them. Actually, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I got this property, um, and actually, when you bid on HUD homes, what's great about it is you uh, you always check the box that you want to have your offer as a backup offer, if not accepted. Now, what happens on uh, if your bid is canceled, then it's just canceled. It's too low. They want they don't want to do anything with it. But if your bid is OBS, and these are this is terminology within the HUD website, OBS means other bids selected. That means they didn't select your bid, but they selected someone else's bid. Now, if for some reason that person does not perform on that particular deal, then you the uh, could be selected as long as your bid meets um, the threshold of HUD. So now, I uh, submit all my bids uh, with. Uh, you know, with backup, you know, it's as as a backup offers. So on this particular deal, um, I submitted it about three weeks ago, and um, and you know, you know, you kind of completely forgot about it. It's other bid selected. Well, got an email and said your bid is accepted. So obviously, someone tied it up, uh, didn't like it for some reason, and then um, and then backed out of the deal. Well. I got the email and I was like, well, you know, uh, I, I, I wasn't 100% confident that I could turn around and sell it. Now, the bid was over um, over $50,000, so I would have had to commit $1,000, you know, to this uh, particular deal um, for earnest money. And I wasn't ready to do it. I wasn't 100% confident. So what I did was, is I uh, went out. I actually went out and um, I just put it on my website and I sent an email blast out. One email blast um, to, to my list of buyers and uh, I put it out at a price that was, you know, that was, it was okay. It made, made about seven or $8,000 profit, right? Um, and I just put it out there. My, 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 my theory was if it, you know, if, if, I, if I don't get any calls on it, there's a lot of an interest, a lot of, a, not a lot of interest on it, you know, I'm just going to let it go, you know, and, and I'm not going to send my earnest money and contract in, of which then it would just go back on the site and they'd resell it. So what happens, I send it out the next day, the next day, I get three full price offers within a matter of a couple hours. I mean, I'm talking contracts and me calling me going, hey, we're ready to go. We're going to open open escrow today. Three full price offers. I'm like, holy cow. Um, and on my website, I have it to where they can just download the contract, fill it out, send it back. So three full price offers. Now, I usually never do this, but um, and I haven't even sent my contract in this this time. 
But I, I, I usually never do this. And, and what, what, what this is, is I never go back and ask for highest and best. I, I never play that game. I, I usually, you know, take the first contract that comes in and um, they open a best grow and it's good to go and it's done. But literally, these all came in within an hour. I mean, we're talking within minutes of each other. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. So I went back to each one of them, tried to pre-qualify them. And they were all solid, all had cash, all wanted to close yesterday. And I said, okay. I said, here's the deal. I've got three offers that all came in within a matter of an hour. I usually never do this, but I'm going to ask you for your highest and best. So I asked them for their highest and best. They text me back their highest and best. And I literally, it was 5000 more than I actually had the price, um, the contract for. We revised the contract, and then we went to uh, to open up escrow on the property, and we're closing it next week. Um, so it's crazy. You kind of don't know what you don't know on a, on a, on a particular property. And that's what's great about HUD. You can actually, um, if, you t- if you bid on Thursdays, you got until all weekend until the following Tuesday but you have to, before you have to submit your paperwork. So literally, you can kind of stick it out there to your buyer to see if you get any interest. And if you don't, you don't have to send in your paperwork. Um, usually, though, I do not bid on properties unless I know I got a deal. Okay? Um, um, so that's, I, I, I just, you know, I just don't do that. So, so, so it's kind of off track, but I just had to tell you that story that, that it's amazing um, to where, and that, now that turns into a, like a $12,000 deal, um, which is great that I didn't even think I had a deal that we're closing next week. So, um, but anyways, so the bottom line is this, is that when it, when it comes to what would I do, what would I do right now, I would bid on HUD Homes, number one. I would definitely have a Google AdWords campaign set up to market for motivated sellers, okay? And uh, number three, I would do a mailing, a mailing. Now, your Google AdWords, you could spend maybe 150, 200 bucks a month, depending on the city you're in, depending on the amount of clicks you get. Okay. Um, on your mailing, do as, as much as you can for your mailing within your 15% budget. Um, and then bid on HUD homes. Bid on HUD homes and try to get them, learn the system, understand the threshold of your particular county, where deals are getting submitted uh, or actually accepted, and then you can start uh, getting those suckers locked up and then turn around and selling them. That's what I would do. You get your first check, you got 15%, you're going to invest it. Now what's going to happen is you're going to get get another uh, two or three deals. You might get another. Let's say you get two deals. So in month one, you get one deal. You're excited. In month two, you take 15%, reinvest it. You got your spiritual law of success. You've tied. You got that on your side. So now in month two, let's say you get two deals, maybe even three deals. Let's say you make 5000 So ma'am, ma'am, let's say now you make $10,000 in month two. Well, guess what? You're stashing that. You're, in, you're, uh, you're giving 10%, so you give $1,000 to a charity and reinvest 15%. You know, let's call it 1500 to make it easy. And then, guess what? Now you got $1,500. you are plowing back into marketing. Well, guess what? You can do a lot of letters. You can do some pay-per-click advertising. And you're, guess what? You're going to start bidding on properties. Now, what happens is once you start putting out properties for sale and uh, you put banner signs out, you put on Craigslist, you put about your buyers and stuff, you're going to start building a relationship with these buyers. You're going to find out what they want. I just had a guy um, uh, call me the other day, a guy from, uh, I think it's Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Charles, actually. I had him on the podcast uh, several months ago. Um, he called me up. He got a contact with a buyer that has $50 million that he wants to spend on houses in his particular market. And he's like, what the holy cow, man, I've got to ramp this sucker up. I can make a million dollars here in the next six to six months to a year. I said, yes, you could. All you got to do is just yeah, put a consistent marketing plan in place and bid on HUD homes like crazy. <laughs> so that's, that's what I told him to do. Um, so you're going to start getting callers, people coming in, calling. So here's the plan. Okay, step one. Number one is take 10% tithe. Number two is take 15% reinvest it into yellow letters to an inheritance, yellow letters to absentee investors. That's what I target on first. 
okay? And, uh, and I would take, uh, I would set up a Google AdWords campaign to market for motivated sellers using the specific keywords. And I, and see, inside the Flip2 Freedom Academy, I give you the websites, I give you the, um, how to structure the campaigns, I give you the actual campaigns, I give you the ads, I give you the keywords, um, that I spent over a hundred thousand dollars testing to figuring out which ones convert and which ones don't. Okay, so I give you all that inside the Flip2 Freedom Academy. So if you're not a member yet, definitely join just for that reason alone um, because, um, you know, it's uh, valuable. Anyways, so the uh, so that's what I do. That's what I do in month two. And now I take the profits, I reinvest it, and I go out and do it again. And then I go out and redo it again. And what's going to happen is you're going to get to a point to where you're going to get your one year's worth of income in the bank pretty darn quick. It might be two months, three months, five months, whatever whatever it might be, depending on your particular situation. But then guess what? You're going to be in a situation where, bam, you have a decision to quit. That's your goal. See, if you have a clear, concise goal, first off, the clear, concise goal is to get your first check. Bam, check that off. It's done. Next clear, concise goal is to get one year's worth of income. You set an account. It's my it's my quitting job account, okay? And then you take that money, that five thousand dollars. You re, you know you 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 take the money out for the, your tithing and reinvesting, and you put the balance in there. And then you go out and you take the check. You know you take the ten thousand or eight or seven or eight thousand dollars from left over from month two. You put that in there. Let's say month three, you get you get three deals. You get fifteen thousand. Bam! You put that in there, and you're gonna see yourself every single month getting closer and closer to freedom. That's what it's all about, the four phases to freedom. Now, in phase three, we're talking about ramping it up, going full-time, quitting your job. That day that you go in and you give them your two-week notice, and that day you have your stuff, it's all packed up, and you walk out your front door of your job for the very last time, you're super excited, you're ramped up, and you're going, holy cow, let's go to phase three. Now, phase three is where you literally, you turn around, and now you're going full-time. Now you're a full-time investor. Now, right? Now it's ramp it up time. Now it's it, now it becomes fun because guess what? You're free. You can do whatever you want. I mean, if you want to take a day off, you can take a day off. If you want to play golf, you can play golf. If you want to take the summer off, you can take the summer off. You can do whatever you want to do. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next phase. When that uh, when I'll release that, I'll be in the next you know a couple weeks or so, whatever. Um, um, that that comes out. Just uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Um, but now let's talk about. And that's, uh, we're done with that. So now let's talk about um, what to do if you're in a rut, okay? Let's say nothing's going your way. Let's say um, you got a bad chain of events going on and you're sliding down this tunnel of like this, you know, this tunnel that's going down, 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 further, further, further. You can't get the grips. You have to, you have to literally, you got to find a way to stop the downward spiral. Okay, you gotta have to find a way to stop that downward spiral. What do you do? What if you're in that downward spiral and you're just you're not you're not feeling it? You don't feel good. You're you're just you're you got this negative emotion going on. You know you you've got bad thoughts. You're you're, you're stressed out all the time. You know things aren't going well. What do you do? What is the first thing you can do? Well, <clears throat> everybody goes through what I call. Um, the roller coaster, and whether it be in your business or whether it be just in life in general. But what happens with the roller coaster is this, you know. And I love roller coasters. We went out to Disneyland this past summer, brought friends out there, kids, and um, and I was with my uh, my uh, eight year old daughter Ava, and uh, went on the roller coaster, and we're going up the roller coaster. See, when you're, you you go up the roller coaster, man, everything's going great. You got momentum. Things are going your way. You know what? Everything you touch turns to gold, man. You, me, you know, and, and you think back. You know, you might have a, the, the. You look back in your life and you go, man, that was the best time, man. Everything was going great, cause you're going uphill. You know, and I was on this roller coaster down in uh, in uh, Anaheim, California, Disneyland. There, where I'm riding up this roller, we're, we're tracking up this hill. My the anticipation. My my daughter was all excited, and she's looking me back and forth, and man, she is excited, right? Well, guess what? Then you get top of the hill, it kind of just slows, momentum kind of slows down, and next thing you know, whoa, you're flying down the hill. You're going down. 
And that's like the roller coaster of life. And you go down and guess what? Then you're down in the valley of the, you know? You're in the valley. You know, and sometimes the valley, it might not be a, a, a month-long thing. It might be a year-long thing. Because you go up and you go up and it's great. And it's, you know, you get the seasons. And, and, and then you go down in the roller coaster. You're freaking out. You're screaming all the way down. You're hanging out. Holy cow! And now you're down in the valley. And you're going, holy cow, man. What happened? Things were going great, man. I was rocking the house. Now what happened? And you're thinking, how the heck am I going to get out of this rut? How am I going to get out of this valley? What am I going to do to create momentum and build momentum and go up the roller coaster? And it's, and it's crazy because, you know, I talk to a lot of people across the country, you know, especially with the podcast and working with people locally here. And uh, we all go through that. We go through that in our business. I mean, we get a motivated seller that call, uh, calls us and they go, holy cow, this is incredible. I get a motivated seller. The phone starts ringing off the hook. And uh, I was talking to a guy yesterday. He's got this great lead on the smoking deal. Then he finds out, guess what? They owe 113000 on a house that's worth eighty five. <laughs> so they go up, whoa, I got this lead. It's incredible. I'm super excited, man. I'm going to make it 30000 off this deal. This is great. And now all of a sudden, woo, they go, bang. oh, man. Oh, they owe 113. I didn't know they had that much on the loan. I feel terrible. You know, and then their world crashes. Don't be a sunny day type of guy. You know what? You got to be up all the time. You know, you got to keep your energy up all the time. This is what hap- has to happen. Um, and But in this business, you're going to have things that's going to go up. You're going to get a deal, and then the deal's going to fall apart. You're going to be down the dumps. Then you're going to get up again. Then you're going to have another two you know, two or three leads that are promising, and then you're not going to be able to sell it, and you're going to be, ah, oh, this is terrible. It is a roller coaster. Well, I'm going to tell you, guess what? It will level off. You're going to get used to it. You're going to get used to the game. You're going to, you're going to get used to the, how real estate works, and you understand how to manage a pipeline of deals and uh, be emotionless when it comes to uh, you know deals falling in and out and sellers being crazy. It's just part. It's just part of the game. Okay. And so now what happens is you got to get yourself out of the rut. So what do you do to get yourself out of that rut? Well, you know, like I said, financially there's financially and emotionally. Well, financially. First thing you gotta do is get out of rise tithe. Okay, I, I don't want to reiterate that again. I've said that a thousand times. You know, just tithe, 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 tithe. That's financially number one. Number two, emotionally, you get out of the rut is be thankful, be grateful, be grateful, and focus on what is great in your life. Average people, average people, focus on what's going wrong. Average people focus on the negative. Average people focus on, you know, the things that suck and dwell on the things that suck. Average. So if you want to be average, focus on things that suck. You want to be above average, focus on the things that are great. And if you can't find them, look hard enough. You know what? I spent four years in the United States Marine Corps. I went to countries like Bangladesh, where the average income is $200 a year. A year. Don't tell me you don't have anything to be thankful for. You live in this great country of the United States of America. People have died for your freedom, for my freedom, for our freedom. So the bottom line is this, is that, you know what? We've got to be grateful. So what I suggest doing to get out of your rut is create a journal or write it down in your iPhone, do whatever it might be, and sit and really think of everything that you are grateful for. It might be grateful for your family. It might be grateful that you live in this country. It might be grateful that you're in a good market. It might be grateful that you have two arms and two legs and two eyes and two ears might be grateful, right, that you're listening to this podcast. might be grateful that you have information right at your fingertips. You might be grateful for friends and family, supporting friends and family. You might be grateful that we are in this time, in this market right now. This is the best time. People are going, oh my gosh, the market sucks. It's terrible. It's all terrible. Oh my, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 
This is the greatest time in real estate in our history. Housing is 50 to 60% off. Buyers are understand that. Smart money gets it. And they're coming in in droves looking for deals and you can tee them up. Get enough cash, get enough cash stick, and build yourself a port cash flow portfolio where uh, you can replace your income without even winking out of bed. That's true freedom. We'll talk about that. That's the fourth phase of freedom. So anyways, how do you get out of the rut? Take a stance, right? And say for 21 days, it takes 21 days to establish a habit. In this 21 days, I am not gonna talk negative. I am not gonna talk bad. And guess what, if you're in the 20th day, and you start talking bad and negative, and you see yourself going that way, well guess what, you just lost. You gotta start over again, 21 days again. So, you write your, write your journal of everything that you're grateful for. A piece of paper, whatever, iPhone, just sit down and think and do that every single day. Everything that you're grateful for. And if it's repetitive, it's okay, be repetitive. You're filling your brain, right? You're filling your brain with positive aspects. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't think, you know, uh, positive attracts positive, that this world of, you know, revolves around energy and vibrations and, and things like that. And uh, like attracts like, well, holy cow. You gotta be on the side of the fence. Because I'm telling you, it is a huge, huge difference. And guys, gals, wasn't always like this. I'm telling you, I, I, it took a lot for me to get my brain in order still of being doubtful and fearful and doubtful of my abilities and fearful of what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. What if I can't close this deal? What if I can't sell it? Everybody has it. But I, you have to condition your brain. You have to, as soon as those thoughts come up, I blank it out of my head. Ah! I stop myself, right? I stop myself and I go, okay, got to stop. And I, and I make a conscious decision to change those thoughts and start thinking about what's working and start thinking about what I am grateful for. Thanksgiving's tomorrow, and uh, <clears throat> everyone's going to be enjoying their turkey. And, and if you're listening to this after the holidays, I wish you the uh, incredible uh, Thanksgiving if you do celebrate it. And, um, and uh, this Thanksgiving weekend. But uh, being thankful. Thankful for what we got. Thankful for what we are. Thankful for the time and place we're in. Thankful for right now. Thankful for who you are. Thankful for the everything. See, you weren't attracted to this podcast and listening to it if you weren't asking for some sort of reason. There is tools out there, more information. You have more information than I have ever had when I first got started. You are way ahead of the curveball, believe me. Way ahead of the curveball with this information you've got. So, be thankful. Give 10%. And those are the two key factors that will get you out of the rut and will put the positive motiva motivation and positive momentum your way. And do not, and this, and this is very difficult, this is difficult for me, Just don't notice, you, you, you don't focus on if it's working or not working. Focus on how you feel that your emotional state is better. And guess what? Your financial state, your world will turn around. It takes 21 days to really create a habit. Okay, create that habit. So when you stay positive and you stop talking about the negative and you be grateful for 21 days, what you're thinking about, you will start seeing shifts around you. Leads will start coming to you. Momentum, things are gonna line up for you that is unexplainable and you will be amazed. You will be amazed. So, for everyone listening, I uh, I wish you the a phenomenal uh, Thanksgiving. I had I hope you had a uh, phenomenal Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this after after uh, Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, I'm excited, guys. I'm uh, Thanksgiving. I had I hope you had a uh, phenomenal Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this after after uh, Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, I'm excited, guys. I'm excited for the new year. 2012 is going to rock. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, 2012, this is your year. 2012, you're going to make a big impact. 2012, you're going to quit your job. I know it. 2012 is going to be your year. 2012 is where your year is going to turn around. 2012, you're going to look back and you're going to say, that was the year that made all the difference. 2012, so put your hands in right now in the circle. Let's get pumped up. 2012, we're going to rock the house. We're going to think about grateful things. We're going to go up in momentum. We're going to quit our jobs and we're going to rock the house and make some serious difference in other people's lives and we're going to make an action.